So remember everybody, it's not if, but when you're gonna have a crash. So let's go ahead and wear our gear and make sure that we're actually doing what we're supposed to be doing out on the road to be the safest rider we possibly can. If you would like to know what to do after a motorcycle crash and possibly save somebody's life, make sure you go to accidentscene.org and sign up for their online class. This is a great opportunity and a great way for you to learn what to do, how to do it, and then possibly save somebody's life. You hurting? My leg is. Which one on your left? Just sit down. Okay. Damn. You okay, man? Alright. Is there any traffic coming? You okay? Oh, is nothing's broken, right? I don't know. You don't know? Does it hurt when you move it? It don't feel good. Oh God. Shit. Yeah, go ahead and sit down. Oh, is that your bone? Probably. Oh, that's not a bone. You're good. Can nah, you sit down? still pretty down? bad. Can you sit down? You okay. Yeah, just take a seat. No, I don't think so. Have you got somebody coming? I gotta turn my set off. I can't hear anything. Yeah, I can't either. What's that? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks for stopping, man. I'm in the fire department, so. Wow, that was a pretty graphic towards the end over there. We saw the injury to his left knee, and guess what? That is where armor inserts go for motorcycle pants. So we're going to talk about rider gear. We're going to talk about ego, peer pressure. But I want to focus a little bit more on the medical side on this one. So we're going to go ahead and scroll past a lot of this stuff. So you see how they're passing people already, and this guy uh, with the camera doesn't have any gloves. But you notice how he crept up. Okay, so let's go back just a little bit. So this motorcyclist that is going to crash is now about, what, two spaces away, two, uh, uh, not spaces, but two lines away from this broken median. And then all of a sudden when we're passing, we get within possibly one, maybe half of one. So this motorcycle rider up front did not maintain his throttle pressure. And that kind of goes along with what I see when it comes to a new rider is that the primary controls aren't necessarily being used the way they should be. At this point, you should be accelerating still because you know you have a buddy behind you, and but you're not really doing that. So let's go ahead and move on a little bit further because I said I want to focus on the medical side. But you see right here, first sign right here, these signs, the yellow, caution, 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 caution. These are signs that are going to let you know, hey, this is what's coming up. Maybe you should start focusing a little bit more. So stay in focus, zone in, do not zone out. We also have this right here. We have a T intersection coming up. So we also have hazards from an intersection. So we got curves and hazards, not good for a motorcycle rider. Let's move on a little bit more. So we got our first turn right here and you can see his foot coming down right away. So his turn was not good. Uh, he's in a good position, lane position is perfectly fine. He's opening up the view on this blind turn. Maybe he went a little bit too fast for such a blind turn. But once again, we don't know too much what's going on in his head. What I can tell from behind here as somebody that does follow uh, my wife when we go out riding and I kind of pay attention to what she's doing, making sure she's doing these things. I give her little helpful tips here and there. Uh, but from what I can see right here, his line position is good, but the moment he's actually entering into the turn, you see how 
the bike is leaning over and his body position isn't the greatest. Now I talked about body position in a previous video and I think I'm gonna be posting something up here to show you guys a little bit how to do it. Uh, this right here is not the appropriate body positioning. It's pushing the bike down a little too much and then you're pretty much standing it straight back up because your body position and the weight transfer is wanting to counterbalance, not counter steer at this point. So we're gonna keep moving forward a little bit. You put your foot down uh, typically as a panic move, okay? So you never wanna do that on the road, but he's putting his foot down as a panic move and you see how he's getting closer and closer to that yellow line getting closer and closer. Now we're on the yellow line. We're gonna start losing a little bit of traction and now we're definitely on the shoulder. Okay, maybe we still got a little bit of room. Nope, uh, that's where the gravel is usually accumulating when it comes to the roads off to the side and definitely when it comes to this T intersection right here. So he crashed, he fell. Now his buddies are gonna uh, double check on him and everything. Very good on the motorcycle rider with the camera. Did not crash and follow him because typically riders behind somebody to crash is going to follow the same line, target fixate, and crash himself. So he shuts off his bike, he's calm, collected, but now we're gonna go ahead and get our adrenaline moving and moving and moving. Thankfully, these uh, motorists are pulled off to the side and they're not hitting anybody. But when you walk up to a scene like this, okay, this is what I wanna talk about more so when it comes to the medical side. And if you wanna learn more about how to treat somebody that's been in an accident, make sure you go to roadguardians.org or accidentscene.org. Same place, Road Guardians is the one that's uh, taking care of all that stuff. But you can actually figure out how to take care of somebody with no prior training at all after a motorcycle accident. There's a great online course, highly recommend it. All right, so we're gonna go over here and you notice right here, let's go back just a little bit. This right here is gonna give you an indication of what's going on. Okay, we got mechanism injury. This is the scene. Uh, mechanism injury pretty much tells us, hey, this is what it looks like. This is what the injuries could be associated with that. And now we're gonna start working towards that. That is our first major clue. And what I see here is massive trauma to the bike. I'm gonna tell you guys that the bike is a patient here because that gives you some information. But massive trauma to the bike, you know, uh, it's got a lot of deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures. You guys should know that if you're EMS. But you also look at this guy right here, the, the motorcycle rider. He's not wearing much gear other than helmet and gloves and possibly work boots. But these are regular jeans. He's leaning, he was leaning over, and you see how he's leaning over a little bit right here. This is a guarding type thing that he do so he's pretty much taking weight off of that left leg you see how he has a bend in his left leg and his right leg is straight he's keeping a lot of weight on his right leg and then he starts to hop around a little bit okay let's go back a little bit you see the back of, of him right here it looks like he might have armor in his jacket I uh, don't know if this is the PE rated foam but if it is the insert the foam insert that comes with normal motorcycle jackets is that soft foam it's not gonna offer any protection whatsoever it might offer some cushion but it's not gonna offer impact protection you actually need to upgrade that to CE level armor for the back. But you can see there was an impact to his back. So hopefully he has armor and hopefully his back is okay because spinal injuries are not good. You see how he's kind of limping, he's limping around. And then you see the first opening of his pants. Now some pants are designed that way. I don't think this one is. And they even talk about, oh, is that bone? We can talk a little bit more about that. But look at this right here. He has his exhaust ripped up. Uh, it's definitely not the way it's supposed to be. His seat is completely gone. He did fall to his left side. So that is probably where the injury from his leg is gonna be associated but just because we see the injury to his leg let's go ahead and move forward just a little bit more just because we see the injury to his leg doesn't mean he doesn't have other injuries so we have to kind of keep an eye on his shoulder his chest because who knows he might have broken a rib and then slowly but surely if he has a tension pneumothorax or a hemothorax he's gonna have difficulty breathing uh, pretty soon so right here he's he's guarding his main thing he says oh my knee hurts um, so he's got the immediate pain to that, but you see how he's, he's hunched over right here. Don't know if he has hip pain or any type of lumbar pain or anything like that. Maybe internal injuries to his, you know, his liver, his pancreas, his kidneys or anything like that. Or he's just leaning over because of anxieties and having a bad day when it comes to crashing your motorcycle. But we're gonna move forward just a little bit more and we're gonna kinda get an idea of what's happening when his buddy shows up and they start to talk. This is where the adrenaline starts to come down and everyone's starting to think, okay, well, now what, now what, now what, now what? Now that we kinda got to this part, they're taking a look at it, they're like, oh, that's no good. You can kinda see it, there's a massive gash into his left knee. Once again, this is where armor inserts for motorcycle jeans are placed, and this is why we need to wear 
wear it because this is third degree road rash. This is an impact point. And yes, it's a road rash because it hit the ground, the ground grabbed it and pretty much ripped off your flesh at that point. So this is where we really need to focus on. Uh, it doesn't look like it's actively bleeding, but when they're talking about is that bone, it quite possibly could be his patellar tendon and patella. And that's not good. Uh, if you have that, you have a high chance of infection. Um, it's just it's just not good not good for everybody there we go we got a better shot right there so at this point this is a surgical moment okay you really have to take them to the hospital at this point within 12 hours you're going to want to get stitches if you don't get stitches within 12 hours you're going to start having complications to the point where the stitches won't take it won't heal you're going to have infections all these different things also with surgery that that's the only thing that's going to fix this if you just let it heal over you're going to have some complications with movement possibly need rehab for this and once again you also want to check the rest of the body for other injuries. This right here, this impact has caused his knee to be this damaged. Imagine what happened to the rest of his body. So at this point, you really need to start calling 911, getting somebody to call 911, point at somebody to call 911. You, over there, call 911. I think there's an actual another guy here, so let's scroll back a little bit. At this point, I would be telling this guy over here to be calling 911. Hey, call 911, uh, tell him where we're at. We have one motorcycle rider down. He has obvious injuries to his left knee, unknown to anywhere else to his body, but he's gonna need an ambulance to get out of here. Um, unless you have a buddy that's gonna take you. Remember, you can always refuse service uh, from the ambulance. It's kidnapping if we take you and you say no. So he's gonna have a little bit of active bleeding. It's probably venous, uh, nothing that's squirting out, so it's not gonna be arterial. So here's the thing when it comes to sitting down and laying down, his knee's actually pretty gross right there, but you don't want somebody to pass out and have a secondary injury. So it's always good to have somebody lay down. Remember, the mechanism of injury dictated that he could possibly have a spinal or head injury. So we really want to lay him down and keep his spine in line. And at this point, since he's laying down, it's like, you know what? I'm going to hold C-spine. This is something you'll learn in accident scene management of how to hold somebody's head in line with their, the rest of their body so they do not have a spinal injury and then we talk about you know how to remove a helmet and all these different things so once again take a class it's really good especially if you want to save a life so yeah have them extend that leg and then you start asking more questions you know what else hurts you does this hurt you start taking off his jacket if you possibly can uh, go with what he's capable of you know if he says ow 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 that's too much pain too much pain stop do your best to look around see if you can kind of finagle it out uh, another thing you could do is have a trauma kit and you can cut off his jacket because trust me after this that jacket is probably no good because look at his bike all right let's move forward a little bit and right now it's like nobody knows what to do you see how right here it's like uh what do we do what do we do what do we do take a class, take an accident scene management class, you could definitely help them out here. Uh, if this was massively bleeding, you can have uh, sterile gauze on it, you can have four by fours, even five by nines, even uh, pads for uh, women's hygiene would work great for this it, because it will you know, absorb a lot and it'll stay in place. That was a very interesting video and I delved a little bit more into the accident scene management type stuff and I did mention taking the class a lot, but let's go ahead and look at this. You know, wear your gear, guys. Make sure you do ATGAT. Make sure you are insuring your body just in case something happens. Also, ride your own ride. I'm unsure if he was trying to keep up with the person ahead of him or he was just trying to, you know, stay well ahead of the person behind him and that's something that Nikki has told me that she tries to speed up sometimes because I'm behind her and she doesn't want me to get too close or she's afraid that she's going to get too close to me guys at the end of the day the person behind you is going to ride their own ride or they should ride their own ride and create their own space cushion the people that you should be really worried about are the people in front but let's not ride their ride pick yours also let's do less panic and more practice you see him panicking when he was going through the turn put his foot down and that tells me that he's he's relatively new or he's riding outside of his limits so that means he needs a little bit more practice for that type of speeds but guys, if you like this type of stuff, make sure you hit that join button. Help support the channel and make sure that these videos can keep on going. With that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and I'll be seeing you around.